It goes green, and then it goes red. I'm like, okay, I'm back live. Hallelujah. Um, let's, let's pick up again. It is doubtful if a person is ever born again, if they won't, don't fully realize that the question of his sin has been dealt with by the Lord. Okay? By the Lord Jesus Christ. Many have been asked to come to Christ simply on the basis of blessings to be received and the joy to be experienced. However, we must realize that Jesus met and dealt with the sin question for us, and it is of, of the greatest importance that we turn from our sin before we can believe him on him as Savior. So we spend a lot of time, you know, get saved and you'll get healed. Get saved and you'll get a car. Get saved this. But receive Christ who has dealt with the sin issue in your life and liberated you from it, and we acknowledge its sinfulness, but realize he dealt with it by his grace and has offered you salvation having dealt with the sin problem okay now let's look at the root meaning of um repentance it is a change of mind or purpose it is the sincere and thorough changing of the mind and disposition in regard to sin it involves a change of view a change of feeling and a change of purpose thus we can say it contains three elements intellectual Emotional and voluntary. And let's look at the intellectual side component. Okay? Um, that involves a change of view. It is the change of view with regard to sin, God, and self. Sin becomes in our lives we recognize not merely as a weakness, an unfortunate happening, or a mistake, but as a personal guilt. Okay? Psalm 51.3 says, For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin ever before me for by the law is the knowledge of sin Romans 320 furthermore sin is recognized to be a transgression against God from a human viewpoint David's sin was against Bathsheba and Uriah her husband but David came to realize that it was against the laws of God he cried out in Psalm 51 4 against thee thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Praise the Lord. That, you know, here, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about coming to the realization that sin is a transgression against God, is a violation of his moral laws and moral code. It is um, displeasing to God. And so we have, to, we have to come to that recognition and then recognize that Christ dealt with it for us. Christ dealt with that for us. It is, it, that, that is the recognition. That is the understanding. That is where we come and come to that place. We go, uh, I acknowledge the sin. I acknowledge it's wrong. I acknowledge my personal guilt in it. But then I receive the work of Christ that dealt with it. Okay? So our, our thinking towards sin is, is changed. Okay? Okay? Um, Sin is also recognized in its relationship to oneself. Not only is it seen as a guilt before God, but as that which defiles and pollutes self. It is, it, it, David recognizes this. He says in Psalm 51, 7, Purge me with hyssop, so, so shall I be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. As Job received his new vision or new revelation of God, he said, As I have heard of uh, thee by the hearing of my ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Now listen, when you become a believer, we don't, we're not talking about repenting in dust, but we're talking about the unbeliever. The unbeliever comes and recognizes <coughs> that his sin, his, his righteousness is as filthy rags. Okay? Hallelujah. This intellectual element of repentance is important. Uh, now, without following with the next step, or the next two elements, uh, it only becomes a um, the the fear of punishment, and yet no real hatred of sin. Okay, so if you only have that intellectual side, then you're just I'm gonna I'm gonna go to hell and I'm gonna burn forever and I'm just afraid of you know that and you, the other parts have to be played here. The emotional element of repentance has often been defined as godly sorrow for sin 
Paul, in his second letter to the church at Corinth, said this, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorrow, you, had, you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of. Now that's old King Jimmy for him. Godly sorrow um, puts repentance to work, and there's no need to be ashamed of that or feel like that's wrong. Okay? Godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of. That can kind of get kind of, that, that, I love that Elizabethan. Uh, of the sorrow that the world worketh death. Okay? So godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. In Luke, that's uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 9 and 10. In Luke 18, 13, Jesus um, painted the picture of the public had bowed over, beating his breast and saying um, that he wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven, but smote his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. There is no way by which we can, we can measure how much emotion is necessary in true repentance, but certainly there is a real stirring of the heart when one is brought face to face with his own dread sin, let me add this to that, in the presence of the holy God. Remember, Peter said, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. Amen. There are times tears follow um, a repentant heart. However, one, you've got to distinguish between what is uh, just sorrow because of your sin and, and a mere flee, uh, feeling of shame for it, you know. Uh, that, that's, um, you know, the vast difference between remorse and repentance. You know, uh, remorse is, I'm sorry I got caught or, you know, that I got found out. Repentance is the acknowledgement and the turning and the, and the shame of it that you want to make something different about it. You want to have a different view of it. You want to, you want to work in a different way. Uh, not just, oh, I got caught, doggone it. Okay. Um, a person who may merely be sorry that he was caught in the act of sin but not truly repentant because of his sin. This is simply could be remorse. Sorrow for sin must be followed by the voluntary element. So we've had the emotional. We've had the um, intellectual. But the voluntary. Now, Billy Sunday, the great uh, circuit rider, evangelist. And when I say rider, I mean rider. He rode a horse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, used to say, religion is not something for your handkerchief, but for your backbone. Now that's that's pretty that's pretty strong there, if you get that you know they're not just crying about that you did something wrong, but doing something about it. Okay, uh, there must be the exercise of will for repentance to be truly effective. This means turning from sin, a wholehearted turning to Christ for forgiveness. Now one of the words used in the, in the Bible for repentance means to turn. This is illustrated in the story of the prodigal son, when he said, "I will arise and go to my father." In Luke fifteen. As repentance touches the will, it will result in several things. One, confessing sin. Luke 15, 21, I will, declare, I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. I mean, I'm sorry, that was Psalm 38, 18. Luke 15, 21 says, I have sinned against heaven. It will forsake sin. It will confess it. I've sinned. Two, it will forsake it. He that cometh, um, covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Um, this is Proverbs 28, 13. Isaiah 55, 7. Let the, whole, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his thoughts. And then, so we're going to confess. We're going to... Um, I'm sorry. We're going to forsake and then we are going to turn. Confess, forsake, turn. Turn to God. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to unto the Lord. Again, 55.7. We must not only turn from sin, but unto God. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 1.9 and Acts 26.18 bear that out. It, it's, repentance is not something meritorious. Now, that's just a big, long word for meaning you earned it. You can't earn repentance. Okay. Repentance must be, never be thought of as, a, as, as something notorious, a work to be done in order that God will grant salvation. Thesen points out that we are not saved for repenting, 
but if we repent. Okay? Uh, the Doua, D-O-U-A-Y version, translates the word repent as do penance. And then the, the church at Rome views repentance as a satisfaction which the sinner pre presents to God. It's a false translation and pictures the sinner as able to do something for his salvation. You can't do it. You can't earn it. Instead of realizing his helplessness and seeing that his salvation is totally in the provision of God through his marvelous grace. So even when you come and you acknowledge and recognize and see, when you have the emotional, intellectual, and, um, oh dear Lord, voluntary actions that, that, that work in repentance, okay? When you have those things working, and you're, you're, um, you're turning from, you're turning to, and you've repented and all that. It is still not your works that produce forgiveness. It's the grace of God that's made the provision for it. Meaning this, you do the, your act of repentance allows the work of God to take place. Okay? When you repent, you're allowing God's work to overtake you and work in you and deliver you and free you and cleanse you. Glory to God. Thank God for it. Amen. I said, thank God for it. <clears throat> uh, so even when we come to that place, and that is a beautiful thing. That's, this is where grace becomes that powerful subject in the, in the New Testament. This is where grace becomes that central theme of the New Testament. You come as the, as the one who is sin, sinful. You come as the one who has in no way the ability to earn your salvation. You come in a recognition that, that you have been lost wholly without God, that you are sinful, that your righteousness is as filthy rags, your feet are swift to shed blood, uh, there's no, there, your, your, your mouth is full of poison, all the stuff that Romans says, and then you come and, and you acknowledge that and you stand before God with a penitent heart and a repentant heart and confess Jesus as Lord and then that work of grace comes into that place where you couldn't do anything about it except accept his cleansing. And he does the work. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He's the one that comes in and cleans. He's the one that comes in and fixes. He's the one that comes in and, and uh, reconciles you to himself by his own blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then grace becomes that central theme of your life <coughs> because you couldn't do anything about it. You couldn't earn it. You couldn't buy it. You recognized it. You knew you were without hope, without God in this world. You knew you were sinful. And then you came to that place where you viewed it as a, a, a violation of God's laws, a God, violation of God's uh, demands. And you it repented. You turned your heart. And he came in and did the work to re reconciliation and restoration, the new birth, and apply his grace to your life. And hallelujah, and he gets all the glory for it. We are his workmanship, created unto good works in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. See, 400, you know, whatever's, or 300 of these can't get you to God. Hallelujah. Remember when, when Jesus talked about, uh, you know, that parable we, we kind of refer to lightly, you know, the, the publican stood the place and said, I'm glad I'm not a sinner like these, you know, da, 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 da. And then the other guy was beat down, bent over. He said, be merciful to me. I'm a sinful man. And Jesus said, the one uh, who left that day right with God basically was this, the one with the repentant heart. Not the self-righteous, not that he was, he fasted, he gave tithes, he did this. No. The one who hung with himself, acknowledged his sinfulness before God, and looked for his mercy. <clears throat> and God's mercy is applied in our life in the form of grace. Hallelujah. That we receive by faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The importance of repentance cannot be underestimated. It is emphasized by a large place given to it in scriptures, both in the Old and New Testament, as well as in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and the early preachers of the gospel. <coughs> Excuse me, that tickle was getting going there. In the Old Testament, um, 
it highlights the place that repentance should have in Israel's relationship with God. Um, as we can see in these following scriptures, Deuteronomy 30, 10, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in, his, in the book of his law, and if you turn unto the Lord with all your heart and with all thy soul, then again, we have another scripture, turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I've commanded your fathers, which I sent to you by my uh, servants, the prophets. That's 2 Kings 17, 13. Jeremiah 8, 6, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course or his own way, doing his own way. As the horse rusheth into the battle. Ezekiel 14, 6 states, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Ezekiel 18, 30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his way, saith the Lord God. Repent, and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Second Chronicles 7, 14, one that we've been using much over the past couple of years and, and coming up to where we are right now. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Well, that's Old Testament. That's Old, well, okay, New Testament. John the Baptist, pre I mean, repentance was the keynote of his ministry. Um, repent, you know, in the preaching, uh, in the wilderness of Judea and, uh, saying this, he was pre out preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Judea saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, Matthew three, one and two, John the Baptist came as a forerunner to Jesus to prepare the hearts of the nation of Israel for their Messiah. The preparation that was necessary was repentance. And it is still so in every sinful heart. Jesus preached repentance. It occupied a large place in the preaching of Jesus. From the time, this is Matthew 4, 17. From the, that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In, in Matthew 4, 17. And in Matthew um, 9, 13, I am, come to call the, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Matthew eleven twenty. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein must most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Then Matthew twelve forty one. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. Behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The disciples preached repentance. Twelve disciples preached repentance and they went out and preached that men everywhere should repent. Matthew and Mark 6, 12. And the Great Commission in Luke 24, 47. Listen to this. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Peter preached. Then said Peter unto them in Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. And then you can look at Acts 3.19, Acts 5.31, Acts 8.22, Acts 11.18. And Paul preached repentance. Yeah, remember Paul, we talked about him earlier. We never, we, we, we're coming back and going to tie him into the repentance thing now. Um, in Acts 20.21, 20, Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You can also look at Acts 26, 20, 2 Corinthians 12, 21, and 2 Timothy 2, 25. Repentance is the will of God for every man. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Glory to God. The command of the Lord is that all men repent. And at the times of this ignorance, God winked at 
wink at it. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent in Acts 17, 30. And that, you know, some of you say, well, you know, what, some of that stuff that John the Baptist did was, a, was you know, a Old Testament ministry because Jesus hadn't gone to the cross. Acts 17, 30 is after the resurrection and the ascension, and he commands everyone, all, everywhere to repent. Hallelujah. Luke 13, 3 says, it teaches us that failure to repent will result in eternal death. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. It brings joy in heaven. Repentance of sinners on earth brings great joy in heaven. Jesus said, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth than over ninety and nine just persons who need no repentance. Luke 15, 7 and 10. How is repentance produced? How is it produced? Jesus taught that miracles in themselves will not produce repentance. Then began he to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Hallelujah. Well, you're out there. The corona can't get on you. Hallelujah. It can't get on me either because I'm a virus kill zone. How about you? Psalm 91. The plague shall not come nigh my dwelling. Okay. Matthew 11, 20 and 21. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazon. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. <coughs> Our Lord taught that, er that even the coming of one back from the dead would not of itself produce repentance. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they hear, be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. In Luke chapter 16, verses 30 and 31. It is a gift of God. That God also hath to, uh, grant to the Gentiles, uh, that God also has, also has granted to the Gentiles repentance unto life, Acts eleven eighteen, 18. In 2 Timothy 2, 25, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure uh, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Repentance is not something that a person can bring about of himself. The person who thinks that he can live for self and the world and, re and then repent and turn to God when he decides to do it, is sadly mistaken. <coughs> Remember, the, the, the Spirit of God strives with man. The Spirit of God walks with man. He moves on his heart. You yield to the Spirit of God as he moves on you and, and, and deals with your life. Hallelujah. Many a sinner has gone on to eternity crying, it's too late. While loved ones and ministers have urged him to repent and accept the Lord. If one ever has an urge to repent of his sin and turn to the Lord, he should do so without delay. I remember the story that Dad Hagen used to tell about the guy, the young men who were in, his, in a church, and they were all back there at the back and kind of, you know, had their heads down and laughing and cutting up. And he went back there uh, during the prayer time and, and talked to them about the Lord and, you know, telling them that, you know, you don't have any promise of the tomorrow. You don't have any promise of the next moment. And they all kind of laughed and stuff. Went out and got in the car and ran down the road. And as they crossed the train track, got hit by a train, all four of them were killed. And went into eternity without Jesus. Today is a day of salvation. Harden not your heart as in the provocation. Hallelujah. The time that could come when you would like to do so, but can't. Lest, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as es Esau, who for one morsel, morsel of meat sold his birthright. For we know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. In Hebrews 12, 16 and 17. Repentance comes through divinely ordered means in relation to the unsaved, through believing God's word. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest uh, of them to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid his robes from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. In Jonah 3, 5, and 6. Through the preaching of the gospel, 
how when you heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what must we do? Acts 2.37. <clears throat> Matthew 12, 41, uh, referring to Nineveh. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Jesus. Now, obviously, Jonas is the Greek, you know, uh, the English from the Greek translation of the, word, the Greek word for Jonas. The Old Testament is Jonah. Okay, that's from Hebrew, uh, the English translation for the Hebrew. It's Jonah and the oldest Jonas in the new. And that was um, Matthew 12, 41. The goodness of God. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Acts 2, 4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. So we see there, you know, that, um, that the, the word, the, the gospel, the goodness of God are the ways that bring repentance. How is it how? Now, that was all in relation to the sinner, but what about the relationship of repentance to the believer? Um. We, we come into repentance through God's chastisement and reproof. Well, I don't believe in that. Tough. It's in the Bible. People come up with all this stuff, you know. I'm pre-forgiven. I don't need to repent. You know, um, um, I don't have to repent because I'm already forgiven before I, before I did it. And therefore, I can go out and do it because I'm already forgiven. Um, can we all say SOS, stupid on steroids? Hebrews 12, 6, 10, and 11. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Verse 10. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. Talking about our fathers. But he for our prophet. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening uh, for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, Afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. God's chastisement leads to repentance. Revelation 3.19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now, you can't get any more New Testament than Revelation 3.19. I mean, that's the, that's, the, that's the end of the writings of the New Testament. Repentance in relation to the Christian uh, happens through a new vision of God. In John 40, uh, Job 42, 5 and 6, I have heard of thee by the hearing of my ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Through the, you know, when we see God as in his purity, we see God in his holiness, we see God in all he is, we, we get wild. We're wild. Remember, remember Moses? Moses, I, I will turn aside and see this sight. And he goes up to the mount with the burning bush, and he gets up there, and the voice cries out of the bush and says, Moses, take off your shoes for the grand, the, uh, well, actually says, Moses, Moses. He said, here I am. Kind of cocky. He says, take your shoes off for the ground you're standing on is holy ground. And then he says, I've, I've heard the cry of my people, the suffering of my people, and I'm sending you to my people. And after a few moments in that presence and in that glory, Moses goes, who am I? In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah says in his prophecy, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train, the train of his glory, filled the temple. And I heard the seraphims cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And they flew with six wings. Twain they covered their eyes. And twain they covered their feet. And with twain they did fly. Crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And I said, um, and then the Lord said, who will go for us? Who shall we send? And I cried out and said, woe is me, for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and an unclean generation. 
that presence. He recognized who he was in, 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 in his, in before God. And the angel did fly and took a coal off the altar and placed it on his lips and said, This is cleanse thy lips and thy iniquity. And the prophet said, Here am I, send me. This, this is what repentance does. This is what coming to the knowledge of, of who we are outside the grace and the mercies of God and accepting his work in us. It transforms us. It changes us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we also come to repentance through loving reproof of brothers or sisters in Christ. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. What do you mean oppose themselves? People who won't turn away from things that are wrong, that are sinful, are opposing their own self. They're hurting their own self. And we are into a love to reach and to strive with them and to help them come to that realization that Jesus Christ will deliver, repay, uh, forgive, and fix that in their life if they'll turn towards him. If God peradventure will grant them repentance hallelujah praise be to god forever i said praise be to god forever and so repentance is vital repentance is vital in our walk with god uh to in coming into the kingdom of god and after we're born again um when we have sinned now it's not that repentance makes you right with gets you born again again that's not what we're talking about now, I know uh, Dake in his Bible says, you know, uh, 13 proofs that man can be born, something like that, that a man can be born again again, and, you know, can be saved from drowning. Well, those, well, those are natural illustrations that don't measure up to the Bible. Um, you know, in 1 John chapter 1, it talks about that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And really, in the Greek, that continually cleanses us. And this is where people take these, and they go and they take the, the fact that God's grace is at work, <coughs> the God, <coughs> excuse me, the God's grace is working in you and God's power of, su of, of uh, sustaining grace is at work and take it to a degree that it's not meant to be. His blood does continually cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But repentance for the believer is as much for the believer as anything else. Acknowledging the sin and purposing to turn away from it. Because it's damaging, it's wrong, it hurts, it's detrimental to your walk with the Lord. It doesn't help you. It holds you back. It keeps you out of His best. Well, I'm pre-forgiven, and I'm going to, I'm going to get blessed no matter what I do, and that's just not true. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Amen. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Paul wrote that to the church at Corneth. Be not mocked. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, the positive side, you sow good things, you reap good things. The negative side, you sow bad things. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, Paul said in Romans. You sow to the Spirit, you reap life everlasting. And so repentance is important for us, really more so than God, as far as, you know, I sinned, I did something wrong, we have to recognize this is wrong, change our attitude about it. To have the intellectual, the emotional, and the voluntary response to that so we can go higher and further up with God. Hallelujah. So repentance is not a bad thing. To repent is not a cuss word. It is a vital part of your walk with the Lord when you are, as a, once you, when, as you're coming to Christ, and after you come to Christ, when you sin against God and you, you violate his laws, you violate his moral code, it's not going to get you saved again, but it is going to make your walk with him more stable and make your, um, your, your relationship with him more stable. On your end. He still loves you. He loves you as much when you sin when you don't. He loved the world so much he gave Jesus. Even while we were dead in our trespasses and sins. He, he, uh, he sent Jesus. Glory to God. He quickened us together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen.
Can I get a couple of hearts out there? You know, all you're watching, just heart me out here. Just send some hearts out there. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, I know. It's more fun to talk about, you know, you're going to have a new Cadillac and a new house. And, you know, and I tell you, one of the things, the reason some people aren't getting that is because they are not walking where they should walk with the Lord. And they're expecting the blessings. But they're, hard. oh, yeah, you know, somebody loaded it up. Go for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys are awesome. Woo. Bring it. Bring it. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I, I hope you enjoyed tonight's part of this teaching on repentance. Um, yeah, you know, we, 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 uh, most of us, if we grew up in any kind of evangelical church, we, we grew up, they, I heard preachers who could bring the, the, uh, the uh, fire and brimstone up out of hell and leave you smelling like smoke when you left the church that night. Yes, sir, buddy. And, um, well, yeah, we need that. We need that. We need, we need to have repentance and have those things fixed. And then we need to walk with God and understand his grace. But when we understand the repentance involves that, you know, that emotional, intellectual, and voluntary aspect, when we understand that we have to begin to view sin as sin, wrong, then we can make the turn away and walk in that whole new plane, that whole new sphere altogether with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Well, it's time for our Sunday, our Wednesday night tithe and offering. You know, offering envelope. Uh, you'll have to wait till Sunday. If you need one right, if you need to give right now, you can through your electronic means of PayPal and um, that tickle. Hallelujah. PayPal or the cash app. And uh, you can go ahead and load that up. <coughs> Send it our way. Glory to God. And um, praise the Lord. Although watch tonight, we're glad to have you. So blessed that you were able to tune in with us. And we apologize for the, the delay at the front end. We weird internet problems. And then all of a sudden, it's, everything got good. Um, I just think it's the devil trying to stop the church. Hallelujah. To Jesus, that he can't stop the church. He can't stop the church. Praise God. All right, those that are giving right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless them according to your holy word and thank you that the windows of heaven are opened unto them and you pour out blessings. They don't have room enough to receive. In the mighty, majestic, and holy name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. Um, real quickly, don't forget, We'll be, um, we'll be back in person uh, at, on Sunday at 1230. We are currently um, meeting at New Life Family Church in the afternoons on Sunday. They're graciously open their doors to us and because uh, our meeting place is still shut down. And uh, they won't let us meet in there. So we're, uh, our, 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 our friends and pastor, co -pastor, uh, pastor friends, um, Bob and Tina Pavlaka, have graciously opened the doors of the church to us. And we're so thankful. They're a blessing. And it's been a blessing to our church to be able to continue to meet um, since our location won't let us meet in there because of the COVID stuff. So praise the Lord. We'll be there on Sunday, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there at 1230. Until then, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Walk in faith, live in victory. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. We love you. Good night.